Okay, so now that our data is ready, we can um, start to specify the model we're going to use. And in this case, because we have a continuous variable for a target value, right? It's the price, which is changes continuously. Um, we're going to use the SVR algorithm in scikit-learn, and that's the SVM, the support vector machine implementation for regression. Okay, so to call that up, we're gonna specify a, va a variable for our model, and we're going to use the SVM. This is the library that we imported from scikit-learn, dot SVR, and that's the regression model for support vector machines. Okay, so here we're just specifying the model we want to use, and in these parentheses, we put in all of the fun uh, parameters of the model. So this is the stuff we have to actually specify to tell scikit-learn how to build our model. Okay, so the training is gonna happen automatically, but you have to specify some parameters first. And you can find all the parameters in the scikit-learn documentation. So here, scikit-learn SVM, the regression model. Here's the basic set of all the parameters you can specify. And a lot of these actually have defaults. So if you wanna work with the defaults, you don't actually have to specify anything and it's gonna create all these default values and default model for you. Okay, in our case, I'm just gonna specify a few very common parameters and two of these we're actually gonna vary as we build different models and evaluate them. Okay, so the first parameter we need to call out is the C parameter, all right? So this controls the penalty function in our algorithm. And starting out, I'm just gonna specify that we're starting at 100. And then uh, the second parameter we use to specify our model is the epsilon. This is the soft margin of the model. And maybe I'll start that off at uh, 0 0.001. And uh, there's a few other useful parameters. Uh, the kernel is the actual um, type of function it's going to use to create the model. Uh, the default is RBF, a radial basis function. This is what we're going to use primarily. So in here you can define other functions. Um, you can see all of them here. You can do linear, poly, sigmoid. We're typically going to stick with the radial basis function. Okay, and that creates just the sort of heat map style model which talks about the proximity of points to each other. Okay, so you can keep that as the default, but I'm just gonna call it out here so we're very explicit about the model we're using. Okay, and then the last uh, parameter we might wanna specify is the cache size. This depends on your uh, computer, but basically specifies how much of your RAM the algorithm can use to store data. It will default to something like 200 megabytes, but if you have a, a machine with at least eight gigabytes of RAM, you can give it more leeway and this will speed up the, the algorithm. And in, in my experimentation, anything over two gigs won't really make a difference. So I typically set this to two gigs to make sure it runs as fast as possible. Okay, so that's the specification of the algorithm. Again, you can specify any number of these other parameters depending on how specific you want to be about your model. Okay, so once we specify the model, we need to now fit that model to our data. So we're just gonna say model, this is our variable that's storing that model, and then we're gonna call it fit function, and we're gonna pass in the, tra the feature part of our training set. So this is our, train our training scaled set for big X, and then the target values which is our small y training. Okay, and what this function will do is gonna run an optimization routine to actually train a version of this model based on our data set. Once this is complete, this model variable is gonna store a model that's somehow uh, been trained to understand our data. Okay, so uh, once we've trained our model, we need to set up a um, some kind of evaluation function to use our validation data sets to see how well our model not only fit the data, but is generalizable to an outside data set. Okay, so the procedure for this is first, 
we're going to use the model to predict values for our validation feature set and then we're going to compare those predicted values to what we know about the target values for the validation set and we're going to derive the mean square error and that's going to be our way for evaluating the performance of this model. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new uh, variable which will be the small y, so the target values of the validation set, the predicted values. Okay, This is our predictions for the target values of the validation set. So now I'm going to use the model to make those predictions and I'm going to use kind of a shorthand implementation of a loop in Python. So in uh, brackets, which will denote an array, I'm going to say model dot predict i for i in x val. Okay, so this is a shortcut for doing for executing a function over an array in Python all in one line. This is technically equivalent for saying um, first we would need to uh, create an empty array for a variable and then we can loop over every value in the validation array and then say y val p dot append and we would append the result of the prediction on i. Okay, so this is the exact same thing, but instead of in three lines, we do it all in one line as a shorthand. Okay, so it's kind of a useful trick to know. So now y val p contains all the predictions for our validation uh, feature set. And now I'm gonna just build a formula for evaluating the mean square error. This will be our uh, way to check how well our model is performing. So I'm going to create a variable called mean square error. And here I'm going to input a function that basically subtracts the values that are within the prediction array from the values that are in the actual target values array. Okay, so this is just very simply comparing what we know and what was predicted. Okay, and the reason we use uh, square error is because depending on the way that you look at this, these values might end up positive or negative, and we want to just uh, take that out of the equation, and if we square it, uh, the results will always be positive. Okay, so the basic setup for this, once we subtract the actual from the predicted, we do uh, exponent squared. Once we have that, we can actually use numpy's mean function to get the average value of all of those values in the array. Okay, so this is mean squared error. Okay, so it's pretty intuitive. Just a few things because of the way that these are structured. In order to get this line by line subtraction working, I just have to input a few. Um, NumPy functions to structure those arrays properly. So don't worry too much about this. This is just kind of a technical requirement of this formula. Okay, so I'm gonna, I have to cast this new array because we built this as a, a Python array. I now have to cast this and turn it into a NumPy array. And then just to make sure that they're both one dimensional arrays that can be compared uh, entry by entry. I'm going to flatten both of these arrays. I'm going to do the same thing here just in case. I'm going to cast this into a NumPy array just to make sure uh, that's what it is and I'm going to flatten it. So just make sure that your mean square error has the same format. And you can see here the basic thing we're doing is deriving the error by subtracting the real value from the predicted. We're squaring it and then we're getting the mean and these things are just to make sure that it's a NumPy array and then flattening it to make sure it's a one-dimensional array and then this, doing the same thing for the known values. That's our basic mean square error function and this is actually all we need to start doing our training. Okay, so if you remember some of the sort of placeholders we have, 
we're only processing the first thousand data points. We're also taking just one model with these kind of guessed parameters, and we're only deriving one error uh, value. Okay, so I'm gonna hit run just to make sure everything's set up correctly. Okay, looks like I just made a typo, so I'll fix that. So now it says run. It's went pretty fast because there's only a thousand um, pieces of data. It's gonna train extremely fast. And now we can uh, ask for a mean square error and make sure that's run uh, correctly. So you can see it's a pretty high number because we're gonna, we have a lot of points. Uh, if we're taking 300 points in our validation, 30% of a thousand, each of those points is counting against our error, right? So this number should be pretty big.